Genesis 1 14 and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years As individuals who live in the United States of America are preparing for the eclipse, which is going to hit us on Monday. Uh, as you know, there are cities like Charleston, Nashville, uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, sort of, and mm -hmm. Salem, Morgan, all in the path. Yeah. But what if you're not in that path? Most of us won't be. Uh, what are you going to say? Right. Well, you're still going to see something. You'll see a partial eclipse, and it's going to be. It's still going to be cool. You'll see something, and it'll be cool. So if you're in that band, if you're lucky enough to be in that band at, at that time, during that day, mm -hmm. you'll see the sun get totally blocked out. But if you get away from that band, what you're going to see in the sky is it's going to kind of look like a cookie with a bite taken out of it. Okay, and the further you get away, the smaller that, that bite will be. But yeah. you'll see, you'll definitely see something. My kids were looking out the window last night asking about it. We were looking at the graphic of the path, and they were, Mom, we're so bummed out we can't be there. What are we going to see? So what are we going to see here in New It's York? still going to be cool. You'll get about 70% uh, coverage of the sun, and about 245 in the afternoon will be the prime time to look up. 2.45. So, yeah. uh, so New York's a, a spot where you'll see it. How about yeah. uh, Los Angeles? Los Angeles is well, 62% at about 10.20 local time in, in, in L.A. Let's go to the Midwest, my favorite mm -hmm. spot in America, the Midwest. Uh, let's pick Cleveland. Cleveland, a little bit better, 80% at about 2.30. And as others around the world prepare for the signs in the heavens on September 23rd, where many are proclaiming that Planet X could arrive, Nibiru, the rapture, How do we prepare for such events? And what do these events mean to us as disciples of Christ on earth? I've gotten some that actually are writing in very concerned because they feel that this eclipse happening on Monday across America is a sign. It's a sign of the day of the Lord. Joel 2.31, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Is this it? Are we at that point where the terrible day of the Lord is going to happen on Tuesday after the eclipse? And the emails and the messages continue to pour in, inquiring, Tally, is this Matthew 24.39 where it says that the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light? I don't think that Matthew 24, 29 applies to this, folks, because immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. We haven't gone through the tribulation period. So I do not think that Monday applies to Matthew 24, 29. But as you can see, there's a lot of concerned people out there who truly do believe that this eclipse is, is of biblical proportions. And before we dive into the September 23rd possible rapture that people are concerned about, I just want to let all of you that are writing in concerned that Monday's eclipse has anything to do with Joel 2.31, where it says that the sun shall be darkened where it says the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Quite often in America, in the United States of America, we can become pretty selfish when it comes to prophecy. We feel that something has to happen through America for it to be prophetic or, or something that is an actual event of prophecy in a way. The eclipse itself is mostly going to impact the United States of America. If this was the event, before the great terrible day of the Lord come. If this was the case, why would it only impact the United States of America? 
What about all of the other citizens all over the world? If the eclipse was going to be a sign of the great and terrible day of the Lord come, according to Joel 31, 231, what about those that are in Africa or those that are in, in other parts of the world? They didn't get to see the sun turning into darkness and the moon turning into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So you see, this is why I don't think that the eclipse has anything to do with Matthew 24, 29, Joel 231, or anything like that. On the Jim Baker Show, a gentleman called Mark Biltz, he is the author of a book called God's Day Timer. And of course, it never ceases to amaze me how God gives these people a personal revelation that they can turn into a book to sell it to you for $19.95. And as always with these personal revelations, they're personal. So the whole church missed the memo. It just went to Mark Biltz. And of course, it's behind a paywall of $19.95 or of $20.95 or of $30.95. You see, that's the problem with the church today. It happens every single year around this time. And then someone has to come along and burst your bubble. It happened with the Shemitah. It happened with common Elenin. It happens consistently in the church. We never learn our lesson. We never learn our lesson. And that's a sad part about this equation. That there are sincere young believers out there that we have to make this video for to, to warn them because there are a lot of people out there in fear because of people telling them that all of this is of biblical proportions for 1995 you know in matthew 25 13 and matthew 24 36 when it says in matthew 25 13 watch therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh or in Matthew 24, 36, when it says, But of that day or an hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Dear brother and sister in Christ, I think that should be enough for you to understand that no man, not the angels of heaven, know the day or the hour. There's not a disclaimer on there. It doesn't say, But of that day an hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, and a couple of YouTubers, you know, because, you know, it's not just the Father. It's, there's a couple of YouTubers out there that I've given a personal revelation about this end time stuff. It doesn't say, But of that day an hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but you know what? I am going to send a special preacher to Jim Baker just to make sure that, you, that, that the Father and him knows for 1995, of course. It never ceases to amaze me. Never ceases to amaze me. And this leads to the September 23rd potential rapture date that is being set. Now, of course, uh, with the bad, there is some decent studies out there. One person that I've seen a lot of studies of is Scotty. And I've talked to Scotty. I haven't talked to him in months, but Whenever I've talked to Scotty, he seems like a genuine brother. And he hasn't set a date, so... But he has some fascinating studies on the topic. There's nothing wrong with studying these types of situations. What's difficult with this situation is when you start setting dates, which is a very big no-no. But also when people start idolizing this stuff. That is when it gets extremely dangerous. Because I've noticed that a lot of people are idolizing this type of stuff. And the videos are pouring in. Could the rapture happen September 23rd? A special alignment of Revelation 12 on September the 23rd. And much and much more. And of course, there's good research in all of this too. Well, I'm going to tell you what my response is to all of this stuff. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 2. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. That word dismayed is Strong's H2865. Now, the Strong's is not the end all of all research. It's simply a tool. But it does explain that the word dismayed is to be broken, to be afraid, to be scared, to be terrified. And it alarms me of the amount of people that have written in scared terrified some scared that tuesday is the start of the tribulation period 
others scared and concerned that Nibiru, that Planet X, is going to literally arrive on September the 23rd. Why are you dismayed at all of these things? Why are you concerned in this manner? Not in a manner of researching or studying or learning, but I see a lot of fear. God tells you not to be dismayed as the heathens, but that's what I see a lot of church folk doing right now. Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. God has not given you a spirit of fear. And let's do say that on September 23rd, Planet X arrived, or Nibiru arrived. Or these fallen angels in the form of, of aliens arrive, which are nothing more than demons and fallen angels' deceptions. What is there to fear? Well, let's say that a rapture did happen, even though my personal opinion, it won't. Just based on based on what I know, there's a lot that's left to happen. Why the fear? And why so much anticipation on what could happen tomorrow, on what could happen next week, when today itself you haven't even turned to God to repent for your sins? I see so much focus on when is Jesus coming, when is Jesus coming, when is Jesus coming, when the entire church usually is living in wicked sin every day. Do you not understand that Christ could come for you tonight? While you're waiting for Planet X, God can come for you tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready for that? Is your home ready for that? Just because no man will know the day or the hour, that doesn't mean that we're not to watch as, as it's said in the scripture. And that we're not going to know around the season, right? Because God prepares us for all things. And when you look around the world, when you look at America, when you look at all of the crazy stuff happening all around this world with transhumanism, with the sodomy agenda, with the sodomy agenda, the wickedness that is happening all around the world, the days of Noah and Lot are happening all around us. My advice for all of you that are writing and asking for my guidance and advice is, number one, beware of personal revelations. Test them. Test them. Test them. Test the fruit. Be careful with your itchy ears looking for theology that you love versus theology that actually edifies you. Don't be in such a rush to be raptured. Okay, people ask me all the time, what do you believe in? Do you believe in the rapture? Do you believe in the pre-wrath? Do you believe in the post? What do you believe in? I personally am still maturing every single day. I do not have a set one that I personally believe in. My opinion, I believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the only way. And I am ready every day. Every day to the best of my ability, I try to stay in the presence of God, worshiping him, seeking him every day. To my daughter, to my wife, I tell them the same thing. Whether it's the rapture or the pre-tribulation rapture, whether it's the pre-wrath, whether it's the post, are you truly ready to endure to the end? Is your heart in the right place? What if Christ doesn't come to 20, 30 years? Are you ready for that? Because I see so many people that want to get out of here Tuesday. And I see so many people that want to get out of here on September 23rd, right? When God has called you to do so much more right now on this earth. So don't stop worrying so much about being raptured and start worrying about saving souls. Not that you can save souls, Christ can save souls, but I'm saying that you can go preach the gospel to so many people that are lost and being ready every day. You know, there are thousands of people that have died waiting for the rapture. At some point in time, a rapture came to them in one way or another, right? They went with the Lord. Some of them went with the Lord, others didn't. This is why I am telling you, as you're researching, whether it's the eclipse on Monday, whether it's the September 23rd, things that are happening, make sure that you stay ready for the coming of Christ every day. There's no greater peace than that, than being in right standing with God. That if you sin, He convicts you, you repent and you turn to Him. And you're ready. No greater peace than that. There's no fear in that. There's peace. Because whether it's one day or a million days, you're in the presence of God every day. May God bless you. I hope that you understand what I'm trying to share with you today. We go through this every single year. And every single year, 
there are thousands of people let down. Let's learn our lesson. Let's compare everything to the scriptures. And trust God. Don't trust men. Men will fail you. Trust God. God bless.